Are you ready for a deck tech? Hmm. <laughs> Alright guys, today we're going to do a deck tech a little bit outside the norm of commander content. And this is for modern. Urza's Kitchen is a new deck on the horizon that's taking advantage of some really broken cards out of Modern Horizons 2. Now, I wanted to explain how this deck works, how it functions. This deck is clocking in at uh, $1,200, uh, $1,246, and about almost $600 on uh, Magic the Gathering Online. But it went 6-1 and one in a recent Modern Challenge, and I thought it was really, really cool how the deck operated. So I wanted to share it with you and explain exactly how this deck works. So let's hop into it. I need to do some edit, uh, some adjusting, because the uh, the kitchen part of this name comes from a card called... Hold on, one second. Let me, let me, let me get her. Asmo... Okay. Asmorano Mardiscadistinac. Cool the car. I'm never trying to say that again, ever. Okay. Anyway, so this busted creature is a non-drop. Uh, she doesn't have a casting cost uh, because they wanted to put more letters on her name. All right. She's a red-black legendary creature, human wizard, three-three. As long as you've discarded a card this turn, you may pay a hybrid black-red to cast a spell. When Asmo enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card named Underworld Cookbook. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Let's talk about Underworld Cookbook really quick. Underworld Cookbook is a... Oh, we'll talk about that actually in a second. All right. Uh, sacrifice two foods. Target creature deals six damage to itself. So we're going to go get Underworld Cookbook, which, spoiler alert, is going to make food tokens. And then we're going to sack two foods. Target creature is going to deal six damage to itself. So we're going to give things food poisoning. You have to be a really tough creature to not die to her food. All right. So let's talk about Underworld Cookbook really quick. We'll go back over here. Underworld Cookbook is a one-drop artifact that says tap, discard a card, create a food token. Sweet. Four mana, uh, tap, sack, Underworld Cookbook, return to our creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Not as relevant in what we're going to be doing, but it can get us back as well. Now, let's talk about the bustedness with Underworld Cookbook. It says disc tap, discard a card, create a food token. So we're going to tap and discard Oval, Chase, Daredevil, what? What say thee? Anyway, so we don't care about its casting cost. It's about four, four mana, four, two. We care about discarding it. So we'll discard Oval Chase Daredevil to our Underworld Cookbook. Underworld Cookbook will then create a food token, which is an artifact entering the battlefield. Oval Chase Daredevil will then see the new food token or artifact entering the battlefield and go back to our hand. So every turn, we can discard and create a food with Oval Chase Daredevil. And you're like, Steven, that's not very broken. Oh, on contrary. It means that we can always cast Asmo. Ugh, she always gets cut off. We can always cast Asmo, but it also means that we can uh, create just tons and tons of value off of all the foods that we're going to be making. Okay, so what can we do with all of what can we do with all this stuff? Well, we've also got Emery Lurker of the Lock, okay? Emery Lurker of the Lock is a two drop, or sorry, three drop, one blue, two colors, one two, this spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. When Emery Lurker of the Lock enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. This can mill over any of our artifacts, put them in the graveyard, or it can even put Oval Chase Daredevil into the graveyard. Or it can put Asmo into the graveyard. We can get Asmo back with our Underworld Cookbook. We can over Oval Chase Daredevil back with our cookbook. We can get all kinds of goodies with that. Now, she has tap. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. You have to pay the additional costs. So for instance, we're going to abuse the crap out of this with Mistress Bobble. Zero drop. Artifact. Sack, tap, sack, Mistress Bobble. Look at the top card of target player's library. Draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So with Emery Lurk of the Lock, we're going to continually recast Mish's Bobble for free and draw two cards a turn. That's our two card draw a turn engine. We can also set this up with Aether Spellbomb, which will allow us to sack Aether Spellbomb and draw a card, or we can bounce stuff back to their hand, bounce creatures back to their hand, and just play it over and over again instead of drawing that extra card a turn. But then Emery Lurker the Lock can get back all the rest of our cards, like Pithing Needle. Shadow Spear, which is going to be useful for our big construct tokens we haven't talked about yet. It can also get Springleaf Drum back if we want to start tapping our creatures for mana. Get back Underworld Cookbook if we need to. 
Now, let's talk about the big stinky stink in the room. That's Urza's Lord High Artificers, a four drop. Oh my goodness. Four drop, one four. Two blue, two colorless, or two of any color. When Urza's Lord High Artificer enters the battlefield, create a zero zero colorless artifact construct creature token with this creature gets plus one one for each artifact you control. It's going to be huge with all these food. Uh, tap an untapped artifact you control, add one blue. All of our food are going to start tapping for blue mana. That's nice. Uh, and then, five mana. Shuffle your library, then exile the top card until an attorney may play that card without paying its mana cost. So, all of our food are going to just start randomly casting stuff off the top of our library, and we're going to get massive creatures to go beat their face in with, say, that Shadow Spear equipped. What? Next up, another way we have to cast uh, Asmo is Street Wraith. Uh, we can cycle this, draw, uh, discard this card, draw a card, pay two life. Not a big deal for us because we're going to get our food token back and just gain some more life. But then we can cast Asmo in turn one for one black or one blue. Or one black or one red. In this case, it's going to be mostly one black. Then we have Thought Monitor. Thought Monitor is another new card from um, Modern Horizons 2. It's a seven drop, one blue, six generic. Don't let that fool you. We will never be casting it for that cost. It's a two two affinity for artifacts flying. Affinity for artifacts, if you do not know, is this casting cost is reduced by one colorless for each artifact you control. Uh, there's going to be a lot of games where we just cast this for one blue. And whenever he enters the battlefield, draw two cards. So for one blue, we're going to get a 2-2 two, two flying. I draw two cards. It's really, really good. And then we can reanimate it with Emery Lurker of the Lock. <sighs> so good. All right, next up, our spells. Uh, we have an instant here with bone shards. It says one uh, black sorcery as an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a creature, or discard a card. So we can discard Oval Chase Daredevil to our bone shards, kill a creature, or planeswalker, and then get Asmo out for one black. So in one turn, we can pay two black mana, destroy a creature or planeswalker, get Asmo into play, and discard our old chase air devil for the rest of our combos. So good. Fatal push, one black, uh, instant destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less. Revolt, destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less. Instead, if a permanent uh, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. Just good business, just good removal. Then we have a counter spell. This will counter anti anything. It says, oh my goodness, mouse. Three drop, two colorless, one blue. Uh, improvise. Your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you've done activating mana abilities pays for one colorless. So for one blue and tapping two of our, you know, food, we can counter target spell unless this controller pays three. What? That's so good. Uh, it will almost always be paid with one blue and tapping two of our artifacts, which is just good business. Uh, again, we talked about Pithy Needle being able to name whatever we want. To, that's a problem on the other side of the board. Shadow Spear gives our constructs just plus one one trample and life leak, which is so good against prowess. Spring Leaf Drum allows us to tap for mana. Honorable Cookbook, we've already talked about. Just I can't believe they printed that card. Uh, next up, lands 22. We have Clear Water Pathway. And, oh, sorry. Clear Water Pathway and, and Merc uh, Water Pathway. Basically, it, you can choose it to tap for black or for blue. Dark, Dark Slick Shores. This card would spike in value. Dark Slick Shores enters battlefield tapped unless you control two or few other lands. Tap for blue or black. Flooded Strand is one of our fetches. We want to lean heavily on the blue fetches. So we have one Flooded Strand, one Misty Rainforest, four Polluted Delta, and one Scalding Tarn. All of these fetch lands can get our three islands, or they can get our watery graves. Next up, oh, some of them can even get our swamp. Our polluted deltas can get our one swamp. Next up, we have the most busted card in Modern Horizons 2. I can't say it enough. This card's broken. All right, it is a saga land, enchantment land. Urza Saga. As it enters the battlefield, or after you draw, after you draw a step, add a lore counter to Urza Saga. Sacrifice after the third lore counter is being uh, put on it. First lore counter, Urza Saga gains tap, add a colorless. So whenever you put it into play, it has tap, add, it gains tap, add colorless. Two, 
Whenever it gets its second Lord counter, Urza Saga gains tap to generic tap. Create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one one for each artifact you control. I'm sorry, this dude's gonna be huge. This dude's just gonna be massive. All that food, all those food tokens and all the other artifacts that we're gonna be creating, it's just gonna be a massive construct token. And then we can activate this a second time, the creating a construct in response to the third lore counter being put on uh, Urza Saga. So we can get two of these construct artifact creature tokens, and then whenever and then whenever that third lore counter finally gets on there, it says search your library for an artifact card with a converted mana cost zero or one, so I can't get lands, artifact lands, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. Okay, so what does Urza Saga go into our library, find, and put into play? Every single artifact we have, except for Thought Monitor, all of them. It's so good. <laughs> There's no reason. The, this card is just so unbelievably good. I wish I had copies, but I, I can't. <laughs> I was like, eh. Anyway, so next up, let's talk about our sideboard. Sideboard's pretty basic to the point. So Engineered Explosives here is a card that we... It looks like we can go get it with Urza's Saga, but you don't want to go fetch this up with Urza's Saga unless, unless you want to kill tokens, which is your own board, by the way. X, Sunburst. This, ba this enters battlefield with a charge counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. So if you pay one blue, it can sacrifice and uh, destroy all cards converted mana cost one. If you play a blue and a black, now I'm going to sacrifice for everything converted mana cost of two. Pay two generic sacrifice engineered explosive. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on engineered explosives. The reason why it's kind of uh, dangerous to use with Urza Saga is Urza Saga is not going to put it in our hand. So we're not going to get a chance to put charge counters on engineer's explosive. It's just going to put it straight into play. And so it won't be able to sacrifice and blow up anything that has... It, it'll blow up things that have a converted mana cost of zero which is most of what we're playing. <laughs> so it's good against us, but it's not good if we want to keep our tokens around. Uh, next up, we have some more Fatal Push. Surprise of surprises. Nihil Spellbomb is interesting because with Emery Lurker of the Lock, we can, um, it's one generic tap sack, exile all cards from target player's graveyard. When Nihil Spellbomb is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay one black if you do draw a card. So this can be another card draw engine for us with the added benefit of being able to exile our opponent's graveyard, which is useful against almost every deck is utilizing their graveyard these days. But it's most useful against things like Dredge. Um, anyway, next up we have Thoughtseize. Whenever you really hate what your opponent's doing, for one black, you can say target player reveals his or her hand. You may choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. It's good business. Uh... One mana and two life? Yep, worth it. Aether Gust is a instant. One blue, one a generic. Choose target spell or permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. This is useful whenever we're wanting to get rid of a blocker that's in our way or useful whenever they're about to kill us with their attacker. Very, very good. They do get the choice of putting it on top or on the bottom, but that's a small price to pay for getting rid of that card. Um, Ashiok, Dream Render. It's uh, one generic, hybrid blue black, hybrid blue black, legendary planeswalker, five loyalty. It says spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their their controller to search their libraries. Yes! It turns off other people's Urza Saga. It turns off their primeval titans. It turns off their fetch lands. It turns off so much, guys. If a deck operates on searching something from their library and putting it in their hand, this is so good. It also has a negative one. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Yes! Absolutely. Heck yeah, I'm in for it. This guy is one of my favorite planeswalkers of all time. And he's super budget. He's like $3.25. Or sorry, $1.75? Yeah, $1.75. All right, next up, we have Metallic Rebuke. Again, more copies of that counter spell that has Improvise. Then we have Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas. One black, one blue, two color, or two of any color. Three loyalty planeswalker, Tezzeret. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. This gets so much out of our deck. It will get, again, all of our artifacts as seen here. It'll get a thought monitor off the top of our library. 
There's no reason not to play. It's just really, really good. Then also, it's negative one. A target artifact becomes a 5-5 five, five artifact creature. It's not as relevant because we're going to be putting out bigger creatures. And we'd rather get to the negative four. Negative four. Target player loses X life. And you gain X life where X is twice the number of artifacts you control. So if I've got six artifacts in play, my negative four ability on Tezzer is going to shoot somebody for 12. I'm going to 12, gain 12 life. That's a 24 point health swing. So good. And the last card, the last card, and I think this is ridiculous, that can even exist in this deck, is Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. If you don't know, these Eldrazi's are bonkers. The fact that this is in the deck probably is, it's probably in here because Mill, they they were afraid of Mill in their meta, but I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, Kozilek Butcher of Truth is a 10 mana, 10 generic mana, 12, 12 Eldrazi, not an artifact by the way. Whenever you cast this spell, draw four cards. Annihilator four. Whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices four permanents. That's just really hard to put up with. When Kozilek Butcher of Truth is put into a graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles their graveyard into their library. Not just Kozilek, their whole graveyard goes back into the library. So whenever you're playing against Mill, this is super relevant. Now, why are they playing Kozilek instead of, oh, what's his name? Emrakul, or her name, Emrakul, or... Name escapes me, I forget for the life of me. Why are they playing this guy instead? Well, I think it's because they can actually cast this guy. For 10 mana, which is not hard with Urza, by the way, if you happen to have an Urza, one, you might just cast it with that 5 ability, Shuffle Your Library Exile, that's super random. Or you may just tap all of your food and all of your lands and just put it into play. And I don't know if you know this, but if you're playing Cosmic Butcher of Truth, you're probably winning the game. Anyway, guys, this is my deck tech. This is this is such a cool deck. It's such a fun deck, and I can't wait to see you guys playing it out there in the wild. You guys have a great day. This is Steve the Actiri here with the deck tech coming at you. See ya. Deuces. Oh, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Notifications, please. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.